Good evening. Good evening. My name is Patricia Thomas, and I live here in the city of New Bern. Um, I'm here in support of Ms. Bun Mrs. Bunce. She, and also I have another comment, but right now I'm in support of Mrs. Bunce because she took the time to help my grandson. There was, I, there were people that I call, and I'm always calling people and trying to talk to different ones in the school. And my grandson, because he was, he had issues and he had hurt, he had anger, he had plenty of anger because they were displaced from their home. My grandchildren, and most of the people in the school know my grandchildren, there's five of them, I raised them. And they, and, and being a young man, and when they, uh, when he started the high school, and they put him in uh, uh, Twilight. They put him in Twilight, well, they put him in Twilight without my knowing. They did not even uh, explain it to me. And Mrs. Bunce partnered with me, helped me, and they took him out of the uh, Twilight. But of course he still had anger. And she worked with him, and she worked with him. Now, he finally went back to regular school, but then again, later on, toward the end of the school term, he went back to twilight. But the thing was that Mrs. Bunce took the time to help him. He went on to ROTC. He completed four years of ROTC. Right. He now enlists. He now enlisted in the army, making his the uh, making the army his the military career. He loved Mrs. Bunce because she helped him anytime he had a problem or anything, or if he had anger or whatever, he went to see Mrs. Bunce. Right. So I think you're making a mistake. I'm not. I don't think. I know you are. If yeah. this is the decision that you have arrived at, because not too many people will take the time. Because just like I, I see kids out there doing something, I will speak to the children. I will speak to them. Whereas somebody will walk across the street and will not say anything to the children. Right. So when someone takes the time to love and to show concern, you should know that person. The Bible says to, to, you know, to notice the good man and what they do. So we should take the time. The board should take the time and the different ones that have come up and, and have said things about Mrs. Bunce, I'm not, see, I don't lie, I don't flatter people, I don't, I don't lie. I won't tell you a lie. I believe in telling the truth, and if a person has done well, I will say so. And she is one person that has. There are some teachers in the school who really look after the, the students. They, they really are. And Mrs. Bunce is one. And I'm going to back her up. All right. Because she has stood by me. I couldn't have done it by myself. Not raising five grandchildren. She helped my grandson. I wish he was here tonight, but he's working. He has worked over a year at Sonic. And today, he doesn't have that anger. Mrs. Bunce is proud of him. Right. I am too. Because coming, being angry all the time, and because of the things, the issues that he was going through, and she took the time, and all she has to do is just, you know, just say his name. And it was like, he melts. So the thing is, consider Mrs. Bunce. Right. And I want to say that on her behalf. Yeah. Um, the other thing I like to say is that I, I spoke to you about, to some of you before, about uniforms. And I believe that the, and Mr. Um, Pop Lewis knows about it, that, and that's something that I'm really fighting for, is the students to wear uniforms in the school. Yeah. It will help the students. Yeah. It will change the way that they see themselves because when kids wear their pants below their butts, that's not seeing themselves as to who they can become. So you have to you have to dress for success. And we all know, and people in the school, you know if you want to look good, you 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 dress for it. You dress the part. So why not give these students, and down in the city, they all wear uniforms. My grandson right there, he lives down in Brooklyn. They wear uniforms, they all wear uniforms. My kids wore uniforms when I was in the city. And the thing about it is that you won't have fights, you won't have arguments over my stuff costs more than your things and so forth, and they won't be taken. 
and plus, it's it's uh, and they won't have low self-esteem. Some kids do not, they cannot afford put uh, the money, but some it will help the parents in with a low budget. And because all you have to do is buy two outfits for the year, and so I would encourage. Yeah, seriously, two outfits and a pair of shoes and a sweater or a vest, whatever. That's the whole year. You wear one one day, wash it, wash it the next day, whatever, and that's it. And you save yourself for money. And as many people here that need money and that's on a budget, this is what's needed in this in this in this uh, in this community, but in this district. But more importantly, is is are the children. That's what I'm concerned with. Because so they can see themselves differently in a different light. Amen. If you look in the mirror and you see yourself, you you know, unless somebody can encourage you and tell you who you are, but you can look in that mirror and you will think, I'm no one, I'm nothing, I will never attain to something. And then some people will even go so far as to tell you that. So what I'm saying to the board, please consider it because it's needed for these children, these youth. And when they see each other, they will have a different perspective on who they are, how they look, and how far they can go in this life. So please consider that. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Tammy Hall. First of all, I want to thank the school district here. And I said that to say this, I had two sons that went to the school district. And things weren't always easy at the school with the teachers as well as with my sons. But I taught my sons one thing. I live at 55 Bear Homes. I live in the city of Newburgh. I taught my sons, it's not where you live, it's how you live. All right. You can go anywhere and live good if you know how to live. Mm -hmm. My son passed away four days before going to college. He graduated from NFA, he was a regional student. I remember, I worked nights and I remember the days. I remember mornings. Security is here and they know. I remember mornings when I would have to come up to the school. I would just be, I would just be coming in from work. My son either said something he didn't have no business, or he did something he didn't have any business. <coughs> and I had a, a relationship with the school that I am the first teacher. I am responsible for them. Yes. Before you do anything, call me. Yes. And they did that. And I was up at the school. I remember mornings I couldn't even drive home from work. And as soon as I got home, there was a message on my machine. And I got back up, and I just threw something on, and I went up to the school. Like I said, my son died last year. He was a regent student. I remember days when he would go after school to the programs. I remember my sister asked him last year when he graduated, just before he graduated, he told her that he couldn't talk with her as much as he used to because he had to stay after school. He said he was getting extra help. They do have stuff at the school. You might got to do a little homework. You might got to call around. You might even have to make a little noise. They have a whole lot of stuff set up for our kids, but the parent got to do some work. And I remember my son telling my sister, I won't be able to call you like I used to, nor have I, because I go after school for help. And she asked him, how many days do you go? He said, well, I go every day except Friday because they had the services every day except Friday. My son went for months every day except for Friday. And what I saw on his 13 week progress, what I saw for his quarter of grades, he started climbing higher and higher and higher. When my son passed away last year, my son was so satisfied to even be at the Bird Free Academy because he learned it wasn't where you lived, it was how you lived. He not only changed 
the mindset and the attitudes of the students he went to school with. I had teachers who I see now who tell me my son's behavior, my son's attitude, my son's way of life inspired them. I don't know what happened with the basketball team. I wasn't there. I know what was said. I know what was put in the paper. But the question I want to know was, where was the parent? Uh -huh. Yes, the school is responsible to a certain point. But remember, we are our child's first teacher. Yes. Right. They got the same reports that I got every year, every uh, 13 week, every quarter. If you're not, um, if you're not uh, uh, sure what your child is really doing in school, we get the state exams that tell you what percentage your, stuff, your child come in, they tell you for what subject, and they tell you where you rank nationally. I watched all of that stuff. But my, my idea to my kids were, and both of them graduated regents, my idea was you are gonna get out of school. You're gonna get out of school because that's your job. I worked, I have a job, and I take care of you. You will go to school and work, and you will get out of school and take care of yourself. So for me, I want to be the different parent tonight. I want to thank the Board of Education, the city uh, uh, and large school district. When I wasn't happy, everybody knew it. <laughs> but I'm letting you know tonight, thank you. Because you made my sons better men, you made them better students, you made them better sons. Like I said, my son is not here, but I have his regents diploma at my house. I have his college ID where he was going to school and never made it. My oldest son got a four-year scholarship to LIU. He graduated from Newburgh Free Academy, and we live right here in the city of Newburgh all this time. Thank you, thank you, Thank you. Yeah.